Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Uh, I rise because not for the first time Paris, uh, the natives, tourists, uh, have been subjected to the most vicious and vile a terrorist attack by religious extremists. Uh, to date, 132 dead, hundreds more injured, many fighting for their lives. And why? Uh, because they ended the traditional working week in a bar or a restaurant uh, or attending a concert. It's hard to accept that in 2015, such a simple act of shopping or socializing uh, should represent an existential threat to life. But that is the grim reality uh, of terrorism. And this House, Mr. Speaker, must take a firm stand uh, against those terrorists who, of course, are attacking not just Paris or France, uh, but represent a threat uh, to the Western world and beyond. So we must also demand a robust response. Uh, the Prime Minister telling us that, of course, here in the United Kingdom, the threat is severe and revealing today that the security forces have prevented no fewer than seven planned attacks in the United Kingdom uh, this year. But, Mr. Speaker, we must also remember who the enemy are. We must not paint everybody with the same brush. No member of this assembly should be held responsible if a high school in the United States is shot up uh, by a white Christian just because we share uh, the same color of skin or the same religious uh, affiliation. The enemy are the extremists, and any security policy uh, must make that a very firm distinction. Today, I think, Mr. Speaker, we should focus on the human cost of the inhumanity uh, of the perpetrators. And on behalf of the Ulster Unionist Party, I would like to extend my deepest sympathies uh, to the families of the deceased and the injured, uh, to President Francois Hollande, and to the people of France, and stand together with them in defiance of those who have attacked our way of life. And in concentrating on the human cost, Mr. Speaker, I finish with just one quote uh, from a restaurant worker in the wake of the attack. He said, one woman had been shot with several Kalashnikov bullets in her side, and she had a huge hole there, uh, an open wound. There was nothing anybody could do. She was only about 20 years old. I knelt down and I talked to her. I told her not to move and to take deep breaths. She didn't complain at all or even say anything. She was just looking up at me and her eyes faded away. I will remember her face and her eyes all my life. Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to join in expressing our revulsion and horror at the evil bloodbath in Paris on Friday evening and for organizing the Minutes Act of Remembrance uh, in the Great Hall earlier this morning. Uh, we, uh, in equal measure, uh, send out uh, our sympathy and support uh, to the people of France. We, from our own experiences, can truly emphasize uh, with them this was not an attack against a military or government target. These gunmen were not engaging their enemies in open warfare, nor were they locked in conflict with an army that they opposed. This was an attack upon innocent, defenseless, harmless citizens. This comprised coordinated assaults upon a concert hall, a football stadium, bars, and restaurants. These were attacks on people out relaxing, enjoying an evening socializing, or at sporting or entertainment events. Mr. Speaker, it is hard to think of less threatening or less hostile targets. Those of my vintage will vividly remember from our country's dark past all the emotions felt last Friday by the population in Paris. 
the desolation, the anxiety for friends and relatives who were in the area of the attacks, the grieving for victims, the apprehension for the future. And they will know for sure that life will never be the same. The scale and the merciless savagery of the carnage will make these killings stand out. But for all the victims and survivors of terror, every act over the decades leaves a life-changing impact. On behalf of the people of Northern Ireland, we mourn with the families of the Paris victims and pray for the recovery of the many who are critically injured and scarred. From this chamber, we extend our condolences to the citizens of Paris, to the people of France, as they mourn. We stand with them in solidarity. Thank you. And I call Mr. Martin O'Muller. Colonel Mike, a Chun Corley. On Friday night, like other members here, I followed uh, the terrible events from Paris by social media, uh, by radio, by TV. But I also had a running commentary, uh, Mr. Speaker, because my daughter was uh, down the street from Le, Le Petit Cambodge, the first restaurant attacked. Um, and I want to thank those who give her and her group shelter that night close to the restaurant. And in the, in the hours since that, uh, she has been able to tell me about the atmosphere in Paris, how, how frightened people are, how, but also how resolute they are. And today, I know that her boyfriend circle, that one young man was killed in the Bataclan concert hall, and in her place of work, uh, one friend there has a, a close friend still missing. Uh, so that's the, the uh, I suppose, the horror uh, which brings us here uh, today in solidarity with Paris. I want to start en, en français, uh, Mr. Speaker. Nous sommes solidaires du peuple parisien en ce moment terrible. Nous exprimons notre plus grande compassion à tous les citoyens de cette ville blessée. Gallimage Kogulyak, Le Muncher Faris, Eganam Koraksha, Janimage Kovro no Kri, Le Muncher Nakara Krychishan. Mr. Speaker, we pledge our solidarity to the people of Paris at this, at this terrible time. We extend uh, deepest sympathy from right across our community to the victims and survivors of Friday night's horror. And we send our love and respect uh, to the people of that wounded city of Paris, with which, of course, we enjoy close ties of history, heritage, commerce, and community. Our thoughts this morning, Mr. Speaker, are with all victims of the global wars which engulf us today, wars in which, of course, it is the civilian populations who suffer most and who indeed are the most frightened, as we saw clearly not only in Paris but also in Beirut at, at the weekend, Mr. Speaker. We stand therefore with the people of Paris in their message to the uh, assailants uh, who carried out Friday night's horrific attacks, and we use the words of the famous civil rights song, Nous n'avons pas peur, ni l'oglorin, we are not afraid. Thank you. And I call Mr. Colum Eastwood. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, on behalf of the SDLP, I want to express our sincere sympathy uh, and solidarity with the people of Paris following the devastating scenes that unfolded on the streets of the city over the weekend. As our party members gathered in Armagh, we were acutely aware of the tragedy that was taking place in the French capital, and it cast a shadow over our proceedings. Can I also express our profound sadness following the suspected ISIS bombing in a busy Beirut marketplace that killed over 40 innocent people? These attacks, no matter where they happen, no matter the scale of the destruction, no matter who the culprit, are an attack on all of us who value the primacy of and power of peace. As a people and as an island, we acutely understand the suffering of the people of France and Lebanon. We know what it's like to face the threat of terror and violence, to face it down, uh, though, to face down those who seek to murder and maim their way to political goals. Today we stand in solidarity with the founding principles of the French Republic, uh, the liberty to live our lives free from the threat of violence, the equality of all peoples, regardless of colour or creed, and a fraternal bond between all peoples and all parties committed to the power of peace 
as a tool for change. We are all united in this chamber today. Uh, we are united across these islands and across Europe against those who seek to shake the foundations of our peace. Let that spirit of unity be the message we send to them. It says more than anything else we could do. Thank you. Thank you. And I call Mr David Ford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And on behalf of my colleagues, I wish to associate ourselves with remarks already made in this chamber. And can I thank you for your initiative earlier today in arranging the opportunity for not just members, but also staff and visitors to show their solidarity. Solidarity, which it's right that we should show to the people of Paris and the people of France in the wake of the multiple atrocities which happened last Friday evening. And of course, we should not forget, as has just been said, the similar atrocity which happened in Beirut, the ongoing challenge posed by the atrocities being perpetrated day and daily in Iraq and Syria by ISIS, similar actions which have happened in relatively recent time across the Middle East and into North Africa, particularly in Kenya and in Nigeria. But France is one of our closest neighbors geographically. France is a partner and has been an ally, a business partner, a partner in time of difficulty, and a partner in terms of where many of us first had our opportunities to experience life in a different culture. So it's felt particularly sensitively uh, for people throughout these islands when they see the atrocities which happened in Paris, somewhere which people can associate with holidays and times of great pleasure for themselves. It is one of the ironies of this weekend that in 1940 and indeed again in 1944, Paris was declared an open city. So that not only the architecture, but the people were left undisturbed in the opening and the closing phases of the Second World War. And a further irony that in the Stade de France, there was a friendly football match being played between France and Germany, an indication of where we in Europe have moved on in recent years but where there clearly are challenges from those who don't accept the fundamental principles of human life and welfare that we do. Because Friday was a direct attack, not on any perceived justifiable target, not even in the twisted sense that would have justified the, atta the attack on Charlie Hebdo earlier this year. Friday night was an attack on ordinary people, Parisians, others from throughout France, visitors, engaging in what people through, throughout Europe engage in on a Friday night, the opportunity to go out with friends and enjoy yourself, whatever particular entertainment you wished. And that's why it is so devastating so many people. That's why it has affected people so strongly in terms of what that meant. That's the reason why we must ensure that we don't just have words, but we do stand together in practical solidarity with our French neighbors, whatever language we speak whatever way we express it, whether it's in French or German or English or Irish, the message has to be of solidarity in the face of those who would carry out such terror and a unity of purpose that we will protect human life and human dignity wherever the threat comes from. Thank you. And I call Mr. Jim Allister. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I join in the sentiments of shock and dismay and the empathy and the deep sympathy with the people of Paris and France at this time. We in this province of all places know the horrors of terrorism and the scale of the slaughter in Paris I think causes us to struggle with the question of how any human being could do such things. But a question that had to be asked in this province as well. Because the uncomfortable truth is that the unmitiga unmitigated evil that manifested itself in a th theatre in Paris was the same unmitigated evil that lined innocent workmen up against their van in King's Mills and riddled them to death. The same unmitigated evil that launched an attack on a restaurant in Paris was the same unmitigated evil that attacked a pub in Greystale or in Lockin Island. The same unmitigated evil that launched bombs to kill 
was the same unmitigated evil that we experienced in Ramon, and yes, even in the most sacred of places, a remembrance service in Inniskillen. Terrorists, all terrorists, are evil and remain evil. There are no good terrorists, even in retrospect. And I trust that the people of France will have the resolve and the determination to ensure that they will not pander to terrorism or fit them in any way such as happened in this country. Another uncomfortable truth is that the open borders of Europe, sadly, have the appearance of supplying a supply line to the fifth column in Europe that would destroy our civilization. And Europe needs to assert itself, assert control over its borders before more of this horror is visited upon us. And I trust that that will be a lesson learnt from this horrendous episode. It comes to Stephen Agnew. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And on behalf of the Green Party in Northern Ireland, I would like to express my condolences with the people of France, and in particular those families uh, who have suffered directly as a result of these attacks. It is hard to understand the mindset of people who are so determined to cause misery and suffering and death, and to think that whilst we all join in sympathy and sorrow here today, that somewhere there are those who celebrate these actions. I think that is, is, is very difficult uh, to, to, to fathom. I think what is important is, is how we respond. And I look back to the response of the Norwegian Prime Minister uh, after the, the, the horrendous uh, atrocity committed by Anders Breivik. And he, in response, he said his answer to the violence was that we need more democracy, more openness, but not naivety. Now, it's diff easy to say, but difficult to achieve. But I think it has to be our, our, our starting point. Whilst we must protect our way of life, we must not do so by destroying our way of life. Mr. Speaker, I have only questions and, and, and not answers. And my fear is that anyone who has a, a, a simple answer to, to some of the complex questions we face, a simple answer to a, a, a complex situation is, is, is usually the wrong one. But we do have to question how we respond. Um, my party stands on a platform of no violence, non-violence. And that's not to say no violence ever, but violence can only be acceptable if and when it prevents a, a, a greater violence. And again, I think it's another principle by which uh, we should underpin any response to these attacks. I do not believe fighting with fire, fire with fire, is, 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 is the way forward. And to way to, the way to mourn victims is not to create uh, more innocent victims. I. I just wish to, to, to wish the, the absolute best to those who are, are, are in recovery, those who are injured, and to the families who have been directly impacted in these attacks. But to solid, stand in solidarity with that wider community, the, 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 this attack has had ripple effects throughout Europe, and to stand in solidarity with all those who absolutely abhor terrorism. And it comes to David McNary. Thank you, Speaker. It's uh, not that long ago that we here in this House said, Je suis Charlie murdered by ISIS. UKIP offer our sincere condolences and sympathy to all those bereaved and saddened by the carnage in Paris. 
And we think we are right in speaking up for many people to demand that the evil perpetrators be brought to justice and that the horror of Paris will not be repeated. I note Speaker Cobra has been meeting to mobilize national security. That includes us, and I trust our cities and towns and villages can be assured that they too are protected from attacks by ISIS, just as the people across the rest of the United Kingdom have that assurance. Our best wishes to Paris, and let's hope that we will all be visiting it for better times in the future. Thank you. And I call Mr. Basil McRae. Uh, Speaker, of course we must send our condolences to those that have suffered and show our solidarity in standing with France at this tragic time. One of the key questions that we might all consider, however, which has not yet been discussed in this chamber, is why is it that France has become the focal point of the ISIS campaign? Why is it that France is identified as the crusader, whilst others are not? And I know that President Hollande will have been disappointed um, in the support that he has had from some people whenever he wanted to take initiatives in terms of airstrikes. There was a vote in the House of Commons. There was a, re a re reference to Congress in the United States. And Hollande and France were left standing alone which is why they are the ones that are identified as being at the point of this war. We therefore all have decisions now to make about whether we are going to stand four square with them and whether we are going to do more than just issue words and platitudes. We will have to consider what is the right way forward. Mr. Alistair, when he was speaking, said there are no good terrorists. I suppose the rejoinder is, there are no good wars. What is the appropriate response that we all must make to this challenge to our democracy? Because I do think there is a danger that you get a knee-jerk reaction against Islam, against Muslims. The ISIS strategy is to divide humanity. Not all of those people are bad people. We must find a way to show our humanity our support. We must win hearts and minds. That is the way forward and it requires cool, calm and calculated thought and not necessarily a knee-jerk reaction. Thank you. And I call Mr. Edmund Putz. realised the scale of what happened on Friday evening. Uh, it was shocked uh, and stunned uh, at these events and the fact that uh, so many people lost their lives is something that um, we should all um, draw upon in, in terms of the pain that has been caused uh, to all of the families that are involved and such uh, an unmitigated waste of human life is an absolute tragedy and it makes us think back a little when you go back to uh, the murders that took place in, in London the 7 7 murders, the 9 11 murders um, in New York, emanating from similar sources. And a little further back, we go back to the, uh, the murders in Oma, T Ban, Bloody Friday, McGurk's Bar, Shankel Bauman. These things are all the same. These things are all when someone else thinks that they have a right for a cause to go out and take other people's lives, innocent people's lives. And of the 129 that are reported dead, eight of those people are not innocent victims. Eight of those people are murdering terrorists. And we must always remember that, that those people are not in the same classification as innocent victims uh, in Paris uh, from many parts of the world. We do need to reflect on our policies and Mr. McRae and Mr. Alistair has uh, spoken uh, from different angles.
but the foolishness of opening up your borders without having any checks or balances is something which is ludicrously stupid. We need to be compassionate to people who are in desperate situations. We need to support those people in those desperate situations. But allowing absolute free flow across our borders without any checks or balances put in place will inevitably lead uh, to more people with a terrorist background coming into Europe. And that is something which is totally unacceptable. I have taken my family to holiday in France many times and have spent many wonderful times in that beautiful country. And today we stand with the people of France. Viva la France, viva la liberté. Thank you, and I call Miss Claire Sugden. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I take no pleasure in joining members of this House to express my horror and deep sadness at the events in Paris on Friday evening. I offer my sincere condolences to those bereaved of those lives that were taken so callously by others. When a loved one is taken from you at the hands of another, the pain sears through your whole being. And that pain, it never leaves you. It scars you. Mr. Speaker, it takes a special kind of bastard to inflict that pain on so many. And I apologise for my use of language, but I really can't think of any other word to describe them. Friday's events are inhumane. They were carried out by bad people, driven by a gross misinterpretation of religion and God. They have no place amongst us. I stand by the people of France and all the people of the world who are fighting against this evil. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I call Mr. David McElveen. And I too rise to offer uh, our sincere sympathies to the people of Paris today uh, who uh, no doubt find themselves still under an immense shadow of darkness uh, over the events that, that unfolded over the weekend. Uh, I remember on the 26th of June last year I had the opportunity to go to a concert in the Bataclan and it was a place of happiness, a place of celebration. Uh, it was a place where people of all different creeds and colours and races gathered together to enjoy an event. And for those who have not been in the venue, it's comparable uh, both in size and layout really to the Ulster Hall in Belfast and has limited uh, points of exit. Uh, and to think of these cowardly, grotesque, inhumane people coming into this building, uh, opening fire indiscriminately, uh, while the poor people who were contained therein had really no um, easy means of escape, uh, I think is just horrific beyond any description or, or explanation. One of the founding principles of France was the principle of liberty, of freedom. This was an attack on freedom. This was an attack on those of us who believe in the right of each individual country and each individual people to determine uh, their own direction of travel. Uh, and this was a grotesque attack on, on that principle. The rise of Islamic terrorism, terrorism throughout the world has spread like a cancer. There have been attacks throughout many cities and many places. Uh, everywhere from New York to Jerusalem to Paris uh, to Beirut. Uh, we've seen it in London. We've seen it right across uh, many major cities in the world. Uh, and one thing I would say, and I, I find myself agreeing with, with, with a number of colleagues that have expressed this morning, with cancer in a physical sense, you don't talk to cancer. You don't persuade cancer to leave a person's body. What you do is you have to deal with it aggressively you have to deal with it in the right way. Uh, and I think what we have to be very careful about this morning, Mr. Speaker, is this is not a war on Islam. This is not a war on any religion, but this is a war and should be a war on terrorism. The very people who threaten the liberty of the people of France, the people who threaten the freedom of the people of Europe and the Western world. Uh, and I would urge um, our, our, our government in Westminster to now step up to the mark and rally behind those countries uh, which are taking a, 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 a forward-thinking pro uh, approach to this in dealing with this blight of terrorism which we find in our country at this moment in time.
Thank you. And can I just uh, make one point? Uh, this is a very emotional and terrible circumstance that we're talking about, and, and I regret the fact that uh, one member uh, departed from what I thought was a very appropriate uh, level of uh, discussion and conversation. Uh, so despite the, uh, the circumstances, I see no excuse for that departure, and I hope it doesn't happen again. The next item in the order.